So, einen wunderschönen guten Morgen in Saal Adams. Jetzt kommt... Welcome and uh, good morning to Saal Adams. This is going to be the year in review by the CCC 2018. Rechts auf der Bühne neben mir On my right is Constanze Kurz, Linus Neumann, Frank, Erdgeist and Nexus. There is no Jahresrückblick like CCC Jahresrückblick 2018. Ein großer Applaus. And a big round of applause. Willkommen zum Jahresrückblick des Chaos Computer Clubs. So, hello and welcome to the yearly review of the Chaos Computer Club. Den 35C3 als Version 1.0 dieses Kongresses begreifen, nachdem wir letztes Jahr eine ziemlich erfolgreiche Beta abgeliefert haben. So, this is version 1.0 of the Congress, after we have uh, delivered a better version last year here in Leipzig. Ein Saal mehr in einer We have one room more for the visitors. Die Bilder von vor ein paar Wochen angeguckt hat, wie diese Hallen aussahen. Ein When we had a look at the Lehrer, pictures uh, about one week ago. Auch, uh, jetzt plötzlich von Leben befüllt mit 17.000 Hackern. So it's very interesting to see that now with 17.000 visitors, uh, it's a great feeling. And we're very happy that you're all here and that's so full. Und, um, so welcome again. Linus, sag doch mal was zu dem Video, das wir gerade gesehen haben. Ja, yeah, Linus, tell something ja, about the video we saw just a minute ago. Das sind Murmeln, die rollen, weil wir ja hier die Rollertage fahren. Oh, that's small balls that uh, were rolling, because we are now having the roller blade days here. Gemacht von Frederik und seinem Team. This was a present by Frederik and his team. So, thanks a lot to them. Also wer jetzt noch nicht zum äh, 35. Mal hier ist, was... So who is not here for the 35th time? What do we do here in this uh, review of the year? Chaos Computer Club, um, die wichtig waren oder die... So we are talking about the subjects that were important to the Chaos Computer Club. Uh, statements we did, uh, comments to the press that we published, regional uh, work that we did. So we had this, saw this Congress growing with each year. So we are happy about uh, this growth. We are not going to talk too much in detail about the small things of the clock, but uh, we are also going to focus on the political issues of uh, the digital. Uh, so we are focusing on the subjects which are important for society and not each on each small little thing of the net politics. 
So right now we think uh, that these subjects already have arrived to the uh, Landes and to the national nation uh, pub politics of uh, Germany. So we start with the structure. So as you can see, uh, the Chaos Computer Club is growing. This year we had uh, another growth. So, as you, so you have to be a little careful about this uh, figure because uh, in 2014 this was a special year. We grow, we grew much faster in this year, um, but as you can see, still uh, during the last years, still there is a continual growth. So we think that uh, there are many people out there who think this is uh, an important idea which we have to um, to back up, and uh, therefore thanks a lot to all those people who have decided uh, to support us. So we have to explain, this is Frank talking, uh, we have to explain uh, that this club is only being supported uh, by the members. Uh, we are not collecting uh, any uh, money uh, from other well, companies or governmental um, sources. And we are very happy about this independence. So we don't have to care for the uh, I, uh, the ideas or the necessities, the requests of the sponsors. Also, das ist natürlich auch etwas, was wieder auf den Kongress zurückschlägt. Also, das ist genauso. This is also something which comes back to the Congress here, because this Congress is being uh, done and supported by all those uh, supporters. Uh, and it allows uh, us to give uh, access nearly to everybody here for, for the to the Congress. And we also try to uh, ha have the club working in this way, so be to be independent from authorities and not to have limit, to not be limited by authorities. So, big thanks to all the people who are um, making this Congress possible and who are making possible uh, this club to exist. Das Office, uh, liefert uns immer ganz schöne the Office is delivering uh, nice uh, figures. So in this case, a reminder from the CCC office, uh, some of your PGP keys uh, need to be renewed. Um, sometimes they are missing. So <laughs> please uh, remind yourself of doing the really uh, PGP control. Uh, most of the pe people in Germany don't have a PGP key, but uh, okay, there is, are enough people to make the statistics. So maybe we should uh, also have a look at the email. No, uh, in this context, uh, the key is automatically generated. So members by... Uh, <laughs> Wir können, wir können das auch bunt. Ähm, diese Folie muss man leider trotzdem ein bisschen erklären. Äh, je heller die Farbe ist. So, uh, this is uh, showing people where come people come from. So, uh, the brighter the color, the more people are coming from those places. And where it's dark, there we have to still work. And where it's yellow, then we can save our forces. Relativ breit über Deutschland verteilen. Um, natürlich ergibt sich auch bei uns so, dass man so diese Ballungsräume, wo mehr Menschen. So, of course, it's clear that where there are big places, uh, big cities, there is more uh, of case computer club than in the rural areas. Sich mit den Themen und den Zielsetzungen des Chaos Computer Clubs auseinanderzusetzen. So, uh, and of course, there are more people in the cities who are looking forward to. Uh, having um, to, to participate in the subjects. And of course, we also have uh, members worldwide. Those uh, from Germany are not included here. We have a large block from members from Switzerland, from Austria, 
and also from uh, outside of the European Union, from USA and, well, UK, soon to be out of uh, the EU. Yeah, I almost forgot about that. <laughs> and uh, if you have that many members worldwide, then of course there's going to be a lot of interest in these members. So uh, there's uh, going to be search, war search warrants to be executed. Uh, we've had this twice this year. There's going to be a talk today by Koyo and Christine at uh, 4 o'clock, 10 past 4 today. Y you have to go there. The reason for these search warrants were so absurd that they really show you that search warrants can just happen. There was a uh, travel guide for chaos tourists um, aimed at political demonstrations in Augsburg and that was used uh, by law enforcement uh, as a call to violence and this travel guide had a rise up email address uh, as a contract address so law enforcement thought uh, oh, what idiots, they use their own domain, so who's this rise up? Oh, these people in the USA, they do hosting for political parties. Uh, but uh, Zwiebelfreunde in Germany collect uh, donations, so why not just go there and see if... And let's go to the uh, heads of this uh, this association, the families at home, they, they obviously have families. Uh, one person wasn't even there, so their family was uh, searched. Why not? Uh, we, we really need to do something, so why not this? And uh, Zwiebelfreunde uh, was uh, going to oppo opposition about this. It was such a strange reason for the search warrant. And it was very quickly declared illegal, but it doesn't mean that the material isn't uh, in the hands of law enforcement for uh, several weeks, including lists of uh, donate, uh, people who not donated. So uh, it's uh, very important to uh, care about your OPSEC, what kind of data you want to keep, uh, how you keep them or don't keep them. So very important, I think, is... So they never uh, assumed that they were uh, actual perpetrators. They assumed they were um, just uh, people who could provide information. And there was a change uh, since last year. Um, uh, what, uh, so witnesses have, uh, have to answer questions. People who are uh, potential perpetrators do not have this. Uh, but as a witness, you cannot uh, um, you cannot uh, encumber yourself, and that is uh, very dangerous. So, um, if you are a witness in in the future uh, to a search warrant, uh, if you are uh, targeted with a search warrant as a witness, then maybe you should probably say, hey, I could uh, hurt myself, uh, so I cannot say anything, because maybe this is just a smarter uh, way to deal with that. The uh, Kaustreff in Dortmund also was visited, uh, the whole house actually. They uh, are living in a, uh, in a building together with uh, something called the Wissenschaftsladen Science Shop. Um, they, they house several uh, initi initiatives and have hosting infrastructure for se several initiatives. Uh, and also, uh, they, they had uh, something that the French police didn't like, which led to the whole building being searched, searching for this server. They were uh, uh, working on a door in the cellar for quite some time and entered all other rooms. So. They had to fight about whether the Kaustreff Dortmund was searched or if the law was just uh, law enforcement was just there, told them they are not allowed to uh, uh, use a telephone, but it wasn't really a search warrant. Uh, it wasn't really a search. They're, they're just looking around. And also police was very friendly. They told them you must uh, put your phones on this table and 
can't touch this, which is even illegal uh, with a search warrant. But the police didn't uh, detain them. They could have left at any time and just have left the, the, the space for the police there. So that was a very uh, grateful offer. Oh, so we see the territorial integrity of our hackerspaces are threatened here. And we would really like this to stop, but we also would like everyone to be prepared. So to finish this up, there's two uh, tips for you. First, uh, the CEAT uh, says that this um, object, which is a 3D printed uh, model of an atomic bomb, uh, CEAT says this is not a butt plug. And another information for you that was necessary, uh, which uh, ga Datenschleuder gave. Um, so during uh, search warrant, there's a there's a gimmick, there's a sticker in the uh, current issue of Datenschleuder, which tells you how to behave when there's uh, when you're being visited. Um, you also shouldn't uh, write it too small because, and also the the numbers that for by by from lawyers that you may want to call, uh, even if you're just witness to a search warrant. Uh, when you're, uh, this is uh, generally early in the morning, so phone numbers uh, and uh, having a list of things you may want to remember uh, that doesn't hurt. And how to, uh, yeah, so remember how, uh, if you don't have the uh, Datenschleuder, but most of them have them already in their post boxes, so we have. Uh, a group of people who care about this uh, Datenschleuder again, so uh, we can be quite certain we can be quite certain that this uh, group of people is going to work, uh, continue their work on Datenschleuder. They also have a lot of technical means which they uh, looked very uh, intensely at during the last year to create this Datenschleuder. So uh, every, a lot of people who were waiting for this were very happy to have a piece of paper, a magazine again. And uh, there will be a digital version uh, on ds.ccc.de. And uh, thanks again for uh, creating this magazine. And we're going to finish up this member uh, part and go to the uh, content part. But there's a small uh, thing we need to uh, tell you. Uh, if you do not have this, uh, it may be because you aren't a member of the CCC. Um, the uh, office is uh, having a table where you can sign up and uh, you, if you become a member, you get this for free, and uh, we are uh, and and we are happy to uh, be able to provide this after uh, a longer break now. And on Congress, you can pay without leaving any electronic traces here on Congress. So you can uh, very secretly, very clandestine, you can become a member of the CCC. And the Datenschleuder, uh, uh, you can also get right here at the office desk. And there's also some older uh, volumes available. So let's go to the content part. Uh, there's some um, uh, connections there. It's not only people from Berlin. Uh, we also have... Uh, uh, people from the local groups, ERFA, Erfahrungsaustauschkreis, so um, you have seen the, the map, so we have a lot of them. The people from uh, Hessen uh, came together from, from Hesse, German state of Hesse. Um, 
about the Trojan used by the government. It's not about the uh, government Trojan um, that didn't only want to give that to the law enforcement, but also to uh, uh, intelligence services. And that led to widespread protests, not only by civil rights groups, but also by people who were asked to uh, give their professional opinion. Uh, this is uh, a logo from FIF, which also was um, invited to give their professional opinion. Uh, so there's uh, a lot of aspects in this uh, law, not only the uh, government Trojan, but uh, a lot of groups came together and collected some factual information about that. The, uh, we talked about it, the Police Duties Act, uh, we had a talk about that yesterday. Uh, we also gave a written testimony about this uh, together with uh, people from Hess, Hess, Hesse. And we have some uh, success there, which was quite surprising for me. Uh, I was there. There, there was a demo uh, demonstration in, in February, and it didn't look like they would uh, change anything. But um, the government Trojan isn't going to be allowed for secret services, but only for law enforcement, but not the secret service. And the problem is, of course, very different because it's hard to control intelligence agencies. <laughs> there are many more um, political duty acts. Uh, we don't want to go into the details here. They all have uh, types of Trojans inside uh, them. Therefore, I think it's a, uh, it's a form of um, opening up of uh, the enforcement agencies. But uh, on the other hand, we saw, saw more protests be than before. So this was uh, in the picture you see the demonstration in Hannover. Um, and many more uh, other groups have uh, been founded after uh, this one. So there was also a talk yesterday, uh, if you want to get more details. Okay, of course the com Chaos Computer Club also uh, was in those uh, bigger assemblies and uh, brought in their experience. Uh, the talk yesterday already mentioned several things. Um, I was uh, also participating in the action in Hanover in uh, Hesse. Uh, and this was uh, one of the biggest demonstrations that we had for a long time. And you thought... Uh, Keep in mind uh, which, how many different uh, groups were participating. So even uh, the football groups have been engaged against this police duties act. Who has already been uh, in near the station in Hanover when there was a football game. Uh, he, he knows uh, that uh, it's not easy to uh, move in this area uh, when there are the controls. The police stated that there were bound about 8,300 members. Uh, the organizers said it was 15,000. So that's nearly twice as much. And I... Uh, I had the chance to uh, have a view on it from up above. We were an, on an upper higher row. Um, and uh, the people who were looking outside, um, they said, okay, this is around about 5,000. But this was about half an hour before this started. 
euch nicht sagen, weil... Uh -huh. And uh, questions that we ask later, what was the number and how was the number calculated, uh, was not communicated to us, so they didn't want to uh, state this. So when stating it was only 8,300 people, Uh, and on the other hand, we say it's around about 15,000. So it's an interesting constellation because actually it does not mind. There were people uh, on the pavement who were uh, applauding. There were people on the windows who were hanging out uh, banners, although they did not uh, participate. So it was one of the biggest demonstrations we had for a long time. So this shows the main difference. And this uh, debate, uh, also if you look at the uh, other regions in Germany, so um, I've got the impression that uh, the, the, the people they, uh, who are organizing those laws, they have the impression oh, that people don't understand uh, we are only doing those laws to fight terrorism. So, and people on the other hand who are uh, uh, dangerous, Uh, what uh, they are put into prison, but what are we going to do with the people who are um, who are real terrorists? So and there is, it's not clear where it's a difference between a dangerous person and a real terrorist. It's not clear. So is it, for example, a person who is uh, interfering with the railway transport of a caster uh, transport? Is this a terrorist? And uh, this problem of uh, not existing uh, limits between dangerous person and uh, terrorist, uh, it's a problem in all the regions of Germany and that's why it's important that you uh, think about it and focus on it. So we also put up some requests uh, We will continue to have this debate in 2019. Uh, it's, of course, not only on Trojans, it's uh, also on biometric, uh, it's of, on DNA analysis. So it's uh, on preventive actions of the police. That's uh, discussing points. Uh, who wants to get more information about this, can get this. So we are very happy about anybody who is going to um, engage in 2019. Uh, also is this. No, we have a look back uh, a year before. We had a problem with this telecom router. So we had... Uh, We tried to be involved in the process uh, in the telecom router because it was uh, quite instable uh, quality. After this we had a process on the governmental uh, level uh, with the BSI and ministries. Uh, and this is what TR stands for, it's a technical regulation for routers. So we had several requests uh, together also with the uh, Freifunker and with open WRT people. So there were different uh, meetings, uh, different comments that we handed in and now the uh, first round had been, uh, has been finished. Uh, for the people who was engaged, who were engaged in this, it was a little frustrating because uh, this first round, the lobbyists of the cable providers actually won it with the worst uh, means in, inside the, the meetings. So in the end, there's actually a very Uh, tumble regulation, which is uh, more or less regulation on can. So our goal actually was 
that there was a possibility for suppliers to differentiate uh, on security updates, which should be mandatory, and uh, also in, in which um, frequency those updates are sent out. And we also wanted to bring through or put through in politics uh, that this was mandatory. So now that can rules uh, so it was quite lots of work for us afterwards and the BSI, the German Authority for uh, Infrastructure Security um, they were not happy so we think it's going to be in a second round and we are looking forward to what is will be the out, uh, result from this second round. So I'm really disappointed uh, from this process. Uh, two years after this uh, fail, failure of the router, uh, this regulation is coming out. And actually in this regulation, there is nothing which would harm the suppliers. So, but that was. <laughs> so actually, they put out the suppliers put out the stuff that uh, they had out two years before. Uh, this what we already have. Uh, this we changed already. So for the people who were uh, on site, uh, it was very frustrating that they were discussing far off the topic. So all alternative firmware, I think this is a very important request. So um, actually to have a free f firmware, this is uh, the only possibility to have old gadgets still running. So those old uh, gadgets, uh, there is no new firmware which uh, fills in all the security lags. Uh, it's uh, something which is not supported anymore by suppliers. And of course, they are not being run anymore by suppliers. And these are subject for attacks. I think we had a special moment uh, where one about 100,000 uh, gadgets were concerned. Um, but, uh, and afterwards, we had uh, quite critical uh, reporting on this. Um, on the other side, we had the uh, press reports by the different associ supplier associations. So um, I hope that, uh, although this momentum is lost now, but I still hope that this uh, is an there's, there will be another momentum which will uh, force suppliers to act in this area. Nein, das war also das war ein Scherz. Uh. Diese also vielleicht so, kurz diese TR noch ganz ich muss das kurz So this was a joke. This uh, TR would like to put this in. Uh, these discussions work like this. All that are sitting at the table, uh, they have the idea to have a distinguishing uh, element uh, especially concerning uh, foreign suppliers. So uh, <laughs> This feature, uh, this uh, is also something which could be so implied, implemented by the uh, Chinese uh, supplier. So is this not sufficient? So uh, they would like to put something on the package uh, which is impressing and therefore uh, they can have uh, higher prices. But it's... Um, yeah, the, the goal is to have it uh, as a process and uh, to uh, put uh, an, a date on. This is uh, well it till a special date. So now it's become, you can only put it on the website and with any other further obligations. For us, the main thing we noticed was that 
the BSI didn't uh, really um, work well in this case. Uh, we were really wondering what is the BSI doing anyway? Wh wh where are they? Um, they are there. There are a lot of lobbyists, uh, and even though the people were s sometimes clearly telling the uh, false statements, nobody was correcting them. So, if they want to create standards for technical security in the digital space, they have to be more active. They have to be able to uh, enforce these regulations and not just moderate uh, a discussion between uh, lobby lobbyists. Uh, I think uh, we, we said that it's important that there is a DBSI, which is a civil uh, body, uh, but in the way they are organized right now and they, uh, uh, the, the way they are acting, that's not helping. However, let's go to brighter news. If the BSI doesn't uh, do anything, then the community has to be uh, the one who does uh, the work. So uh, in this case, I'm talking about Freifunk, uh, who are very close to us, uh, both in terms of technical uh, exchange as well as uh, tools for digital, um, for example, uh, with uh, refugee uh, camps and uh, in schools with the Kausmacht Schule project. Uh, Freifunk uh, also is uh, very active. They also have a very large assembly here at the uh, 35C3. And they had a problem uh, during, the day, uh, during the year uh, that in uh, some uh, parts of Germany they were uh, accepted as um, tax uh, exempt. But uh, in um, uh, Schleswig-Holstein, they did have some support, but the, uh, it wasn't successful to uh, get them declared uh, tax exempt. Um, in November, I think, maybe it was October, from by CDU, Green, the Green Party, and FDP, they were uh, accepted uh, to be tax exempt. The SPD had uh, another uh, idea which didn't really make a lot of difference. And uh, CCC was asked, uh, hey, uh, what do you think about uh, giving them tax exempt status? And it wasn't very hard for us. We were ready to uh, write a larger, uh, well, short uh, statement where we were very warmly uh, supporting them. Uh, the uh, the, the for free work they are doing for tens of years now, it should really be uh, have more acceptance. And we were very happy that the, uh, that was accepted in the end and uh, they are now uh, able in most uh, parts of Germany to um, cooperate without uh, barriers. And we are very happy that our uh, uh, work here paid off. Uh, we are not quite as happy. There was a kind of uh, a project uh, at a station, larger station, a rather new station in Berlin. Südkreuz, there was a pilot project, pilot phase. They were testing three commercial um, companies for face recognition. And it was uh, a project by a former minister de Maizière, who went there twice himself, which increased press coverage. But his successor didn't really talk about that at all, except for a small statement after it was done, which was only uh, at the end of this year. And he said he didn't really push this as his uh, prestige project, but at least they were giving a statement after it was uh, closed. And the uh, uh, final statement from the uh, federal police, they had they were essentially uh, so we uh, s uh, said um, uh, told them that it was a 
uh, really unscientific, really uh, not truthful. Uh, sorry, I'm getting uh, enraged again. They are not even trying to... They, we, we have a working group within the uh, uh, CCC and uh, they're not even giving us the numbers so we are able to see what happened. They uh, had uh, at least, yeah, they, they, they got like the negative uh, price by larger statistical organizations here in Germany for this. It's not scientific at all, it's not able to look at, and then they combined all the three, uh, the three manufacturers to get uh, recognition rates that aren't uh, super terrible. And within the door, they all only had recognition rates around 10, it's all just 10 to 12 percent, it's all just very terrible. The, the whole project uh, is being continued slightly differently without uh, biometrics, but uh, with uh, anomaly detection. So they want to see uh, fast movements when someone uh, falls down, for example. So they're now going to hire actors. So So the computer knows what these kinds of scenes look like. And we are really hoping that these kinds of actors, so, so we are uh, gladly volunteering to become these actors. Uh, there's a lot of things to be said about that, but uh, in the year end review, uh, we don't have that much time. There's another project, for example, in Mannheim with uh, 76 cameras that also want to look at biometric data. And that's, of course, it's not really uh, video surveillance, it's uh, biometric uh, surveillance. And uh, people are confusing these. Uh, but it, it seems that uh, the German ministerial Minister of Interior uh, is... Uh, re doesn't really seem to show any interest at, or very, very little interest. And we're going to continue watching this in the second phase uh, when there's no uh, biometric measurements anymore. Um, we, we've had a lot of fun there. We were going down the uh, escalators uh, with masks on. But we shouldn't uh, accept the normalization of biometric uh, data collection, where neither at Südkreuz nor anywhere else. And uh, in Hamburg, there was uh, very encouraging results where the um, person concerned with the privacy uh, was uh, very much um, uh, working towards getting this uh, database deleted. Um, so we don't want to have from the children to the very old person uh, 500 million people indexed and we're going to continue this fight in 2019. Does anyone want to add something? No, I want to say something very fundamental. This uh, face recognition, the fact that it didn't work, uh, the the fact that they are lying about how it kind of worked it shouldn't uh, confuse us about the real problem. The fact that this uh, technology doesn't work in the beginning uh, doesn't mean that it's not going to be introduced uh, on a gre greater scale. And the problem is that these uh, networks of surveillance cameras are being connected to computers. Uh, if you look at what's happening in Asia, um, networks of thousands of cameras are being connected using fiber uh, to the cloud. Oh yeah, maybe that's a, a way to get finally get fiber at the uh, railway stations. Also we uns auch nicht davon abhalten lassen, dass irgendwie wir Deutschland als uh, Yeah, we shouldn't uh, uh, kid ourselves. We we may have not we may not have the great uh, uh, internet connection, but these uh, surveillance systems that are under development right now, they are not um, de depending on face recognition. They are going to be combined, combined with data from smartphones. Uh, data 
uh, the, like how are you walking? So many uh, cameras are analyzing the style in which you walk. So we shouldn't be uh, concentrated too much about facial, con uh, facial recognition, but the uh, connected uh, detection of many people and their behavior, and that's what it, this is about. Uh, last year we were talking about the uh, uh, German uh, identity card law, EID law. Uh, the EID law, which uh, creates a central biometric database, which already exists. So we are uh, talking about facial recognition in stations um, while there already exists a biometric database. And after uh, 10 years, it's going to be complete because everyone has to get a new ID card within this time frame. And the surveillance, which is everywhere, uh, well, the minister d didn't repeat it, but the commercial biometric uh, surveillance also has made great strides. And especially uh, great uh, projects like uh, in New Orleans by Palantir, which uh, I believe are more advanced than these uh, manufacturers we've seen in uh, Südkreuz. And we can now continue to the next uh, great debacle. CITES is a project from 2018. They are attached to the uh, University of the uh, Bundeswehr in Berlin. We uh, see the entry here. Andre Meister has uh, gone there and took, taken the, uh, the photograph for us. And we remember that CITES is uh, being led by someone from the BND Secret Service, or who used to work for BND. And they are uh, trying to uh, get hackers to work for them, we are not very uh, happy. Uh, we're not very unhappy that people don't really want to work there, or who need employment that urgently. It's great to see that they get uh, management people, but not as fast as they want it. But they don't uh, find someone to manage, which so. Uh, uh, Management seems to work, but not what they want to manage. Uh, so the debate about that wasn't very surprising, but just the beginning of it. Uh, we were talking about hackback in the uh, political space, uh, which is about um, countering active, um, active attacks by disabling the infrastructure that's used for it. And there was a very interesting statement by the uh, scientific service of the German parliament, which uh, showed many legal problems. Um, and that's not only a problem for... Uh, it's not only supposed to be used by, uh, by, by German uh, government agencies, but also by the army, the Bundeswehr. And uh, there's the ADIC, ADAC, Agency for Disruptive in Innovations in Cybersecurity. I'm not making this up. And von der Leyen and uh, Horst Seehofer presented this. And uh, for some reason, they uh, left out a D afterwards. So the disruptive wasn't even too, uh, too weird for them. So it's just AIC. We don't know where the D was left. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we didn't get much information when the two were speaking. Uh, von der Leyen basically said it was like DARPA. Uh, so it's basically, it's providing, I mean, it's uh, very important for humanity. Um, it does have some military background, but uh, it brought us the internet. Yeah, she didn't mention the, the drones, the predator drones. And we need to look at this from the background uh, that since two or three years in Germany there's a fight going on about how cyber security architecture, like they say, uh, how this is supposed to look like, which uh, agency should actually be concerned with what. And the disruptive agency here 
Yeah, I just really love this uh, word. Uh, it's one piece of the puzzle. And it's about trying to create a central uh, point that uh, supplies these kind of tools. And they were trying to uh, not talk about attack, but more about defense. But everyone who is concerned with this in this process, uh, in the political process, they are saying that it's they're trying to uh, forge attack uh, tools there. And I just want to inter inter sec uh, interject here. I want to uh, make a warning about hacking back. What they are telling us, uh, we're, we're almost uh, making the same points here, but uh, the idea is that an attack is happening right now. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's uh, going forward into uh, our systems, and it needs to be stopped to prevent larger uh, damage. But the attacks we see that it is in progress and you can stop it while it's in progress. That's not uh, how it works. So uh, they always use denial of service attacks here because uh, in a uh, data uh, breach, the data has been breached. So what else are, is going to happen? So it's very hard to define a scenario where a hackback is even potentially uh, helpful. So I'm now imagining the ADIC or CITIS or whatever. They are sitting with their coffee in the morning and then the general comes in and says, hack back, this email address, this IP address. And then they fetch their keyboards and hack. <laughs> that, that's not how it works. Yeah, but, but that's, that's how they imagine it. And I don't think they, they are so stupid. I think they... Uh, try to uh, allow, they, they try to get the uh, authorization to hack. And then they can always say, well, if we hadn't hacked them, then it would have been even worse. So uh, it's according to the law. But we d won't get a law that uh, defines clearly what a hackback is and what is not. At the end of this debate, they won't have offensive cyber uh, capabilities. Because if they uh, want to use them, then they have to uh, infiltrate systems earlier, and so they are able to turn it off later when it attacks. And that's where we don't want to go, and I think we were cl very clear about this. So I would like to point out uh, what the um, research uh, agencies of uh, the parliament have discovered and published. So the, uh, the uh, statement is clear. We have a um, defense army. But also other authorities uh, have, have stated that it's not a possibility to change this situation. We have a defense army and this cannot be changed. It would be illegal. Uh, currently that's our right and uh, even if it fits them or not, uh, this is where we have to stand for. Therefore, we had to put something in written. Uh, this current debate actually is to define the position. Where is the Federal Republic of Germany to be uh, located? Uh, should the uh, offensive possibility be uh, limited? Or uh, in the, uh, as in the uh, secrency agency, um, yeah, in, in BND, in the uh, security agency, we are not sure uh, how much offensive possibilities there are. What, what, what actually uh, Germany wants was that, uh, would they want to like to play with the uh, other big uh, players? But it seems that uh, Germany would like to do this. And this positioning uh, to state uh, we don't want to have this. We want a defensive strategy. Uh, we know, laid this down uh, to point this out and to make clear uh, there are also other ways. There are some think tanks between authorities and the German military 
um, to define under what rules we are allowed to do offensive operations. But uh, as you can come up with uh, practical examples, uh, the last uh, attack to infrastructure of uh, the German authorities uh, when the, Russias, the Russians came in, what actually would, what did, did you want to hack back? Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to hack uh, Gmail uh, because you have a Trojan? Uh, so it's rather difficult uh, technically, uh, but also politically. So uh, the real examples, they actually do not like. Uh, so they always say, okay, this is secret, uh, we have some more examples, but we are not allowed to tell you. So we say, okay, we are in a really good position position we are in a, we would like to have a defensive strategy and we should have uh, defensive measures and we made concrete uh, suggestions uh, for example uh, uh, characterizing uh, gadgets which are interconnected incentive programs educational programs to know how to program in a secure way but also um, insurance uh, as if you have secure or if you state you have secure gadgets, then you should also be uh, be liable for this in case this is attacked. And of course, there's the aspect of international contracts. Of course, internationally, it's really difficult to uh, to control uh, those operations. It may be possible to uh, count the Trojans, um, but in other uh, situations, also the states, the nations are uh, trying to stick to those uh, uh, contracts. So, uh, unfortunately, in the cyber security area, it's a little difficult to have international uh, contracts. Um, in the United States and Great Britain are currently not very uh, willing to have this. So, the idea is to have uh, defensive uh, agreements and not set up offensive uh, possibilities. Yeah, we also want to have and to show clearly uh, a clear position uh, what concerns the think tanks that are uh, giving information to the uh, government. So as a European country, we need to request those things also internationally and on the academic side. Yeah. So, also internationally, uh, lawyers, they come up and uh, they try to figure out what possibilities there would be. Um, so, we wanted to make a statement uh, where we hope to find also people who are joining in uh, to enhance this defensive strategy. So this is now uh, concerning international uh, requests on responsible encryption. Uh, this means uh, it's also the request to have uh, no backdoors uh, in software. Uh, on the other hand, uh, yeah, there is the request from uh, agencies uh, to have backdoors to get inside the software. And that actually, this is a continuation of crypto wars. Uh, especially, this has been forced from the side of the Five Eyes. So in Australia, they have just won. So the law in Australia has already put uh, in force. So they uh, offer, in Australia, there's a service which is offered uh, with encryption, but there's an implemented director. So it will be very interesting how the big uh, technology suppliers will stick to this. Clear is that this strategy, which is or had 
could also be uh, foreseen. Um, so encrypting is okay. Uh, what about decryption? So the, the background is that the uh, big uh, security agencies, um, yes, the uh, encryption is being done without the users knowing this. So it's in implemented in WhatsApp, for example. You even don't re recognize it. So they have ubiquitous uh, encryption. So and uh, this really makes the work of secrecy agencies more difficult. So this is actually quite good. Uh, otherwise, they would not uh, react in this way. So um, they will try to implement backdoors, not only here in the Five Eyes sectors, but also here in Europe. So uh, we have to be uh, alert. So they always argue, okay, those bad terrorists, so that's why the government uh, needs to be able to look into what is happening uh, in the sites of communication. So um, be alert, there will be those uh, discussions and talks where this is requested. So coming back to the Tronen's discussion, so actually FBI has already been uh, tra well trapped. Um, there was somebody who has Oh, there was somebody in Parliament who has always uh, questions again, and uh, they were discovered uh, changing, manipulating the figures. So we want the the request was we want to have figures. So and that's the main point. The uh, what they want to have it for those Trojans. It's actually not cannot be proved by figures. So uh, it's very important to have offensive requests to get hard facts and uh, not rely on the felt. Um. So something more, which oh, uh, it will it will be here with us for the next years. It's always quite difficult to talk in this uh, area because this is the bigger crowd uh, which is not addicted to Facebook. So although most of us don't ha do not have an account with Facebook, but of course you are also concerned. And this uh, has been made clear by the Cambridge Analytica uh, scandal. So the debate, actually, it has switched from a privacy discussion to the bigger question, how about manual, um, being safe from ma manipulation. We know much more now. Uh, but we won't go into the details right now here. Uh, this uh, I will do on day four with Indo Dachwitz in an own talk. We will have a look back on uh, the Facebook scandal and uh, the micro-targeting debate. So it was a really disastrous uh, year for this advertising. Uh, company. So this uh, subject will continue to be with us in the future. So we need to be very clear about this. It's not about data being lost. It's about data being used. They didn't. Uh, it's about uh, having the power to manipulate, to accumulate uh, uh, as much data. Uh, but from so many people, uh, by so many, uh, by so few people, uh, leads to a situation that is very hard to control. And a very ho important point is: it doesn't make sense to focus on the technical details. Uh, we are seeing right now that the election in Brazil 
they are using uh, different technical methods. They uh, were using WhatsApp groups and uh, similar chat uh, groups, but they were also based on profiling. They were also targeting people. What it's this about is political manipulation by accumulating data. So it's not just about Facebook. It's about all these data companies. And I always thought, uh, I almost thought they were shooting us. us. Are, they, are they this uh, angry? Okay, no. Uh, one important point is to mention that these networks and systems that are collecting uh, data and creating profiles of us uh, are meant to manipulate us. Uh, whether this is done through advertisements or political manipulation, we should uh, keep that in mind. It uh, doesn't matter which system it is. Um, creating profiles, creating personality profiles from us that, that are explaining how we are working f uh, in our insides, not just from the outside, uh, but they know better than we know how we are working as a human being. Uh, they are made for exactly what this is uh, being used for. There are companies uh, where when you get internet, uh, it includes Facebook, so you're using it every day. And once you want to look at the rest of the internet, you have to pay for it. So if you look at both of these trends, they are not able to properly uh, use their responsibility for political discourse, especially Facebook uh, has uh, shown to be uh, deficient in this case uh, with uh, Analytica. And they are using their position as a sole uh, provider of information that they are curating themselves, uh, partly automatic, partly they are actually curating it themselves. Uh, so if you look at Malaysia, for example, they don't have uh, personnel there to, to react to the worst cases even. So there's no native speakers and uh, that, that could uh, react uh, to hate speak. Uh, hate speech in the Facebook network. And these uh, two factors combined are uh, making, uh, are really, uh, uh, I'm really afraid of these. And it's creeping into uh, our networks. There's a, by Vodafone, I think, Deutsche Telekom and Vodafone are doing zero rating um, offers. And you have to look at uh, the uh, Decentral the, the fact that the internet is decentra uh, decentralized, um, which has been rec in decline during the last years, so more and more people are being confronted by uh, with the internet via Facebook. So uh, when Facebook is down, they are recharging their phones because they think they don't have any money anymore. So this is when the companies win. Uh, once these companies are big enough. They are uh, unhappy with the fact that the rest of the internet even exists. Uh, and so it may happen that the rest of the internet uh, vanishes for most of the people. Uh, be it because you have to pay more money or even have to pay any money at all to uh, see anything outside of this corporate network. Uh, Vodafone has done this in Germany by adding passes. Uh, Telekom has a uh, offer which is called StreamOn. And it's always a problem for the um, bloggers, uh, service providers that are not included. So us, for example. For example, the uh, C3 video uh, operations center, the VOC. Uh, we, we'd like to extend our thanks to them for their work. Uh, all of the CCC events and uh, some related events, uh, they film them, they stream them, they put them on the internet. It's a lot of uh, work uh, over the course of the year and they have a uh, video on demand portal which uh, provides a lot of great entertainment. Uh, there's uh, these uh, stickers, media, CCCDE and uh, chill. You can do that together with your friends, uh, thanks to the VOC. So, 
the zero rating offers uh, always uh, targets the most data hungry services. Um, so they say, hey, we have to do uh, bandwidth management. So you get Netflix, YouTube uh, for free, maybe audio streaming. And then the only thing that's left is really just, well, porn. <laughs> oh, it's not included. Oh, I didn't know. Shit. Well, the only thing that's left is the rest of the internet, which costs money now. And they are saying, hey, isn't it great what you get for free? But the difference, is, well, the, f looking at from the other side is what you have to pay for now. And I can't see the case when you look at uh, to some uh, at some times of the day, Netflix is 90% of the traffic of the internet. So the rest uh, we we can't uh, provide for them because we don't have the bandwidth for that. We have a written report. We've written a written report. Um, uh, to the uh, REC, used to be called RECTP, is now called Bundesnetzagentur, is the federal regulation agency for the networks in Germany. And there were very different, difficult uh, law questions uh, regarding European law, uh, which is very hard for us because we are a, a club of hackers. Uh, but we are uh, a providing a lot of uh, content which is being discriminated against, and uh, that's what we put out in this report. It's also available on CCCDE, like all our other reports. And I just want to uh, make clear that uh, we've uh, fought long, long and hard for net neutrality in Europe, and uh, we think zero rating is covered by that. And the Bundesnetzagentur said, well, under some circumstances, it may be possible for a provider to do that kind of offers. So first of all, they have to do it everywhere where they are acting. So also in the EU roaming, and they said, well, uh, we can't afford that. So it's, uh, the law is against our business practice. So we just ignore it. And the uh, last update was that there were some uh, punishments issued. So Deutsche Telekom said, no, we're not going to pay for that. We're going to file a lawsuit against this. So that's very, um, very cheeky from them. So when non-technical people talking about uh, net neutrality, uh, I was confronted with a lot of negative energy. Uh, customers that pay for StreamOn or the Vodafone Pass they see how this is beneficial for them. So they get it because they want some special stream and they don't want this to be taken away. So it's a very hard uh, discussion to have. We, we need to explain to them what the uh, problem is. And uh, it was very hard for me to uh, talk to people who uh, bought this, who thought, uh, who thought they could uh, save using these offers. And it was very hard. And uh, I think this is a call to action to all of you. Uh, I think it's very important, uh, interesting that I I'm paying for something, so I'm saving money, which uh, I think it's very interesting to do that. You, you pay for something additionally. Uh, it's like uh, when there's uh, an offer for uh, children's diapers, and you buy them because they're, they're cheap. And if you buy two of them, you've saved twice. The other side of the issue is, well, we could go to Vodafone uh, as the CCC and say, hey, we have this streaming portal with this great content. How do these uh, contracts look? I if somebody has a copy of one of these contracts, we would really love to read it. But maybe they are individual. Uh, individual with each content provider. Is that all we have to say about net neutrality? Okay, so let's continue with something less uh, happy. The, uh, so data retention uh, is a law in Germany, but it is currently not enforced because there's uh, lawsuits against them. So we have a very complex situation. Uh, so it is law in Germany, but it's not uh, enforced. 
And the question about this uh, conflict is going to haunt us next year as well. Uh, the um, government, of course, wants data retention. The um, uh, courts are disagreeing. But this is going to continue, not only in Germany, but also uh, in the European Union. And there's one of the uh, problems is that the European Court of, Court of Law uh, has issued a lawsuit uh, that, and it, that is widely ignored. Um, they are saying essentially you cannot uh, store telecommunication data without cause. It's not uh, according to European law and they are trying to get around it. But we have a second uh, layer here that we want to talk about it. Uh, it's partly a good thing, partly a bad thing. There's, uh, in addition to the European Court of Law, there's also the European uh, Human Rights Law. Um, there were some um, there were some verdicts uh, that uh, are also uh, concerning contents of communication. Uh, ten NGOs from UK mostly and me as a private citizen, we've won this uh, case, but not in all the details. So it was uh, against the uh, British government and GCHQ and the acts that um, allow them to co collect this data and, and filter and select on it, uh, including the uh, restrictions they face. And some of that is against human rights uh, convention, which is a great uh, success. But the same year uh, in Sweden, uh, it was also about mass surveillance. Uh, but uh, it was from a different uh, part of the court uh, and they were uh, saying essentially the opposite, which said, well, that is uh, still acceptable under human rights. And in both cases, there were um, uh, people were complaining about it. Um, and they have, I think they have uh, a great uh, chance to win it because the second uh, verdict was uh, issued after afterwards. But um, also in our case, someone uh, was attacking the, the verdict. So uh, even in the GCHQ uh, court case, where they uh, accept the uh, part of the surveillance, we were responding to this, so there's going to be another um, another hearing, and we hope that the mass surveillance is going to be made impossible. But still, we have to say, uh, in Great Britain, it still continues. Maybe also a call for action to all. This is a, a development which actually frustrates me a little bit. Um, we have to uh, stick to that the, um, uh, the results of these courts uh, actually also arrive in, uh, in uh, politics and uh, not politi politicians going to Karlsruhe and then uh, influencing the laws. So th they shouldn't ignore the uh, results of those laws as the uh, government, German government actually did it. Oh, yeah. Since, since one year, there has uh, a very cool webmailer, uh, encrypting webmailer uh, in offer. So, uh, if you have used uh, a governmental exam, then uh, you have to use it. So, uh, we had a closer look about what lawyers thought of so it is a system, it should be a system uh, where courts and lawyers 
uh, should communicate uh, amongst each other with uh, signature. It's a piece of Java. We have to install it. Uh, in version 1, it comes with a secret key uh, to be installed. So they drew it back, uh, they reworked it. The backend now seems uh, better, but Java on some operating systems still is uh, not optimal. I have a friend, uh, I have the pleasure to keep this uh, system up to date. So uh, what do they <laughs> what do they do? They have uh, pop-ups when you, they want when you want to have a new message to be sent up. Probably they have developed it for a browser or in a certain uh, yeah certain optimization. So actually, this system is uh, failed. So, but actually, I would like to go on and uh, where is this project GitHub? <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I tried to make this uh, open source. And this is really a big point for me. Uh, it may not be that the authorities of our country uh, are not able to force people to uh, other companies. So they now have a new version on Apple and uh, other systems and uh, in January the new patch is awaited. So if for us here this would be uh, this should be the case. Then, uh, and half an hour later, there's a pull request. And um, so we have to point out very clear that we have the competences and we have the community who is uh, interested in those uh, projects. Please let us help, as we did in the last years. Uh, please do public source and. Uh, uh, yeah, accept our patches. This is critical infrastructure and therefore it has to be open source. Uh, another thing that we discussed uh, this was this year the results of the uh, general data protection regulation which uh, came very uh, unexpected everybody was uh, panicking uh, what is happening now uh, we are now being uh, the internet uh, won't work anymore We'll get warnings uh, over and over, can't do anything more. Um, I myself got lots of mails from people uh, who uh, asked me for, well, please uh, sign this uh, declaration, uh, stay on my mailing list. Um, so it was like everybody waking up. We already had this uh, demand for a data letter, so uh, we would like to know if somebody has uh, stored our data. And uh, with this GDPR, we actually have got this, because all of those companies that uh, want to send mail to me and letters, uh, they have to inform me, yes, uh, we do have your data. Um, would you like uh, to be uh, on the, our uh, mailing list? Yes, please. So there are still some problems with the GDPR. Um, but nevertheless, uh, yeah, some of the results that are not so great, uh, they are due to some lawyers who are uh, actually uh, making others feel not so comfortable. But uh, we think that most of the effects are positive. The negative uh, effects we see on the uh, corners, uh, it's, most of, uh, the, it's mostly the governments. Uh, they actually now um, 
stop uh, giving access to information, to information freedom with, uh, with the uh, argument of data protection, to privacy. So, but uh, nevertheless, all of this panicking uh, is actually has not become true. So when the discussion at the beginning of the year, uh, when we came near the data protection officer of uh, our country to get more information on this topic, uh, to get some more hints, unfortunately, there, were, there was nothing of it at all about this. But nevertheless, in December, uh, in Parliament this year, uh, she stated this discussion about the GDPR, uh, she commented it. So, so she stated, uh, okay, authorities should have delivered more information to people. So actually, uh, the problem was that uh, the uh, not st giving information was caused by the authorities. And now uh, she, uh, Mrs. Fosshoff, will uh, resign. It will be Mr. Kelber who will take the new, uh, will be new data protection officer. And he has already uh, declared that the D GDPR is one of his central topics. So I hope uh, there will be a turnaround uh, of this uh, topic. And also how we recognized uh, how companies deal with processing of our data. So the, what we stated already several years, uh, what, what we stated, uh, the, the, um, how, well, how important this uh, task is or this uh, office is for the uh, for the nation. Um, we hope it uh, it will be easy to uh, make it better than before. So one of his main tasks will be to uh, get the uh, national G uh, GDPR data protection regulation going. So uh, actually, it was not the top uh, topic of the CCC because it's rather legal. Yeah, but it's not possible uh, to have a new uh, legislation on privacy every year just to be able to inform ourselves. So the other par half part of the companies who didn't uh, give me information that they had my data, um, so in some of those companies and accounts, I actually didn't look them up for years. Um, it would have been better if there would be some legal information uh, that uh, my data is with them and they are informing me actively once per year. So it has become rather natural to have those data and to ha store them in the database and uh, yes from some time of time maybe we have some uh, uh, algorithm which collects and in retrieves some additional information from this uh, data mountain so actually it's important to uh, ask the question why is it why is it important to collect the data uh, when people are for example accessing my website so, uh, in the case of CCC, uh, we don't have any logging now when accessing the uh, uh, the CCC website. So that's what we have on our uh, data uh, protection declaration. We don't log anything, uh, and that's my favorite uh, privacy declaration. Um, yeah, maybe that's an idea for you to uh, check with your systems. Just switch it off. Uh, and then you don't have uh, any problem of uh, thinking of data protection uh, declarations or privacy declarations uh, on your side. Well, we as the CCC are not as quite close to economic groups. Uh, close to economy, this is the next topic. 
well, this is for me. There are four, a few more commissions with this picture in the Chancellor's Office of the Digital Council. There's the Data Ethic Commission and the Bundestag has a commission, the Enquete Commission for Dig uh, Artificial Intelligence. So there's a focus of this government uh, on digi digital topics, but we can see that in the other legislatures periods, the experts of these commissions are there, but at the same time, the strategic papers are put out, like with the hyped uh, topic of artificial intelligence, where there was a strategy paper in autumn, where the focus was on economic politics and more data in the sense of what the government does. That's an interesting um, thing where this happens again, where you ha hold the experts, but you just do it anyways. And we'll look for the results of these commissions, especially for the Data Ethics Commission. We, they have shown in the beginning that they are not really lackeys of the government and um, corporations. We'll see what these commissions will do. Well, I think, hope they won't give too much money to a private company, the Deutschland Institute of uh, Künstliche Intelligenz. This enquete commission for the AI is there f to put a lot of money into sciences that will bring us uh, up close with Google. I know this is the enquete commission. This is not. We, we have to differentiate between a government and a parliament that wants some uh, um, experts. Of course, there will be a lot of uh, economic people in there. Uh, we have to uh, do a bit faster, you know, but we still have to say something about the secret services. What's important to me in 2018 this is the first year where the Ministry of the Interior, the State Secretary said this the the state Trojan should be put into law. So that's not the priority of Horst Seehofer. But that we know of, but they stated this. It was a big scandal year for the Secret Services. We don't ha really have to say it with Amok president running amok, uh, uh, using right-wing um, conspiracy theories, the European Secret Service chief, weeks later, um, doubling down on that with uh, a commission on Anis Amri, really hard um, failure of, of secret services and a lot of lies um, with uh, uh, Connect, connection people with, with molds in right-wing uh, groups. Why? What do we need these for? They are expensive. We should uh, uh, abolish them after Starbucks hacked their vein, vein detection technology. That's not enough applause. The impression is that some here may be already be used to the uh, secret services. Well, there are, we are working on more positive things as well. Something I could not attend, which was very sad, but it's very important. And we already hinted at it at the Ruta TR. We have to think about it a bit how to go with uh, about digital uh, services with um, ecologically sound concepts. The name is with, with trees, um, work together with different organizations, bits and trees, with BUNY, Bread for the World, FIF, OKF, and Technical University Berlin. And thinking about brainstorming how we could do digitalization in a 
democratic, just world? And what do we need to have digitalization in connection with resources, democratic and just world, what we can afford? And if you look around a bit, digitalization, from my view, is a privilege for people who can afford it. And it's the case that much of the technologies we use, that we buy, throw away again, like a smartphone every two years, are produced on the base of resources that are limited and like um, mined under harsh um, conditions in countries by people who can't afford these technologies. And we have to do a lot here uh, so in, in society and on a geo, geo, geopolitical scale. It's a, definitely an important thing uh, for the future. Um, what we want, you can read at ccc.de. Um, the walk was very great. Every, they recorded everything. If you want to educate yourself a bit, you can learn a, a lot there. So please watch these talks. We, I recommend it. Um, they, a lot of people came, surprisingly. It's, it's an important topic to a lot of people, apparently. We hope we can go at it with more power next year. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we are also very happy about this. Yeah. It's like robot bulls charging after a red cape. One of the topics that we uh, had to discuss with CCC work and this event is a question of killer robots. So weaponized autonomous systems there was the try on international level to like build some build build something on this but the greater powers didn't want this the we don't want this we don't want to limit uh, these systems we think it's a big problem since of course drone technology autonomous systems is in, in the hacker um, scene is a core topic and next year we'll have to do more here to make sure on a technical level this won't happen. The same thing that we are trying to reach with secret services in Germany that nobody will work for them. And I think on a similar th uh, way we'll have to do this with autonomous weaponized systems. Um, next, uh, we are very delighted to release a movie here tonight. Um, a filmmaker called Sandra Trostol has worked on this documentary for several years, including a CC summer camp. I think the first um, recordings were at camp and then there are two congresses included as well. Um, this movie is basically about the events organized by CCC and the people who are involved in these events. And it's really received really good critiques so far. And I think those critiques are also really um, an applause for you, us and everyone here because it's about the great world and the great environment that we have created here. And after a lot of um, effort, this movie is finally ready, we're very happy, um, and it will be released under Creative Commons license tonight, so it will be freely available to everyone online, but that's not enough. Um, Sander will also soon-ish um, release a platform, probably sometime next year, where all the um, raw material that she had for the movie will be released. So that's something like 70 hours of raw material so that all of us, including you, can basically make our own uh, CCC movies uh, using all the material that she used and that she didn't use. And I think that is really pretty a pretty unique thing to do, as far as I know, something like that hasn't really happened. So not just releasing the movie in Creative Commons, but then also releasing the entire raw material and all of that 
um, and that all of that using the CCC privacy demands. So the first person who has counted all the pixels, uh, <laughs> all, who has counted all the pixels of uh, pi pixeled out pi faces, can uh, download the movie f online for free. And tonight, the official premiere happens with the official release. Some of you may have already seen it in a cinema, but um, yeah. Um, and inspired maybe by the Case Computer Club um, and maybe also by our um, motto last year, there's an additional um, document documentation team. Uh, um, uh, it's a movie about uh, Var Holland and the creation history of um, the Case Computer Club. Um, and they're asking you for material for this movie. Um, th the world consists of matter, energy, and information. Matter and energy are limited. Information is unlimited. And it's the only possibility... I'm just read saying what's being said in this uh, video clip. Um, and because of that, the CCC is founded. Um, using public data um, and protecting private data. Um, that's something that we are confronted with more and more today, whether you want it or not. Well, and now I'm just turning on the computer. Um, there are strange people with strange machines. Um, information has a price today and will also have a price in the future. Um, and the Chaos Computer Club will also exist, will continue to exist in the future in the long run. Um, well, I think basic rights are more important for me. We are still looking for unique and authentic photo and film footage from the early Chaos years. Also, wenn ihr da noch über Materialien verfügt, Fotos, Bilder, Videos, um, alles gerne gesehen und gesucht von. So, if you have material, photos, uh, film, uh, the team is very would look forward to that. Last year, we also had a learning process that we went through. Um, we will document that now, and the result of this learning process is like um, here we had on a pretty bitter in a bitter bitter way not every human knew what uh, teams we have here for your security your feeling of security there's the cert for medical uh, ouchies and bigger um, injuries the awareness team for conflicts, um, attacks, uh, conflicts, helps emotionally you feel well, that your rights are respected, that you can talk to someone if that isn't the case. Concrete uh, conflicts, there's security, and for a few years now, there's a specific support for people on the aut autist spectrum. This is a formal team now, C3 RT, um, which helps people uh, before, during, after the conference. Last year, didn't have for the first year, but the first time in the strength, um, we wanted to throw people out from the um, event preventatively. Before that, we only did that after very um, hard things that happened, but we didn't really put it to a regular uh, process, like we didn't have anyone who could be asked for that, and then it happened. Last year, we kind of fell over that, that we didn't know how to uh, who to speak to with a conflict like this. Conflict 
this is like before the event, we know that the, the person being there would like hinder a person from being there. And we had, after the Congress in January, we I know it was January because that was when I still had a hard Congress um, hangover, couldn't really uh, get over it. Um, we went on this with a lot of people, with a lot of expertise in different areas like psychology, psychiatry, systemic um, advice, sorry, ju juristic expertise. Um, on how to make this, to have a process that isn't exploitable and has the focus on helping and supporting people. We do not want something like this person isn't allowed in, this isn't person isn't allowed in, but we want it with a support system for the community. And you can look at this there are workshops on this con uh, congress for the uh, ju jury place, the, ju the ju jurisdiction office, and we are thinking after 10 months of work we put into this, we have a pretty neutral place with people who are trusted by the uh, CCC uh, that have expertise for the events for the Vereine that make the CCC, the topics we are working in. And I think we can have an applause for these people because they are doing emotionally harsh, hard work and we should thank them from our hearts. Let's go on. Okay, this is an area we will have to skip through a bit because we don't have as much time, but it's still important because work in regional CCCs is very important. We cannot do this, could not tell the whole story. We have to pick and choose a little bit and put a spotlight on things where we hope that other people will do this or ideas we found very funny or that just talk to me and add guys. The thing is, Chaos work is uh, hand, hand work uh, or leg work. Uh, the club is so very big. We have to, we, we can't really know everything. Most of you maybe don't know that there's in your Alpha Kreis or your, in an Alpha Kreis, Kreis near you, there happened interesting things. It's very good to just go there and take a look. When I saw the plenum protocols from the Alpha Kreises on our mailing list, I saw that there are forms for very interesting things doing from within our community where we are saying this Congress feeling, take it back with you home. It's important. This is just four days after all. And we have to bring it back into society. This is not in some vacuum. It's happening in the Air Force. It's happening there. The Air Force are inviting, inviting like the assemblies. We are inviting to have a space to come together to work on projects or ideas. And this is happening in the Air Force, Chaos Macht Schule um, is there in a lot of Air Fachkreise, where teachers are supporting workshops, where um, students get to know about, about digital civilianship. And this picture I will uh, show you. Um, I asked the Air Force circles like, to present themselves to tell us what's been important for them uh, this year or next year. Some people uh, c called back with photos or without. 
And this is in München, Munich. Um, so, for example, in Munich, um, they cooperated with um, um, with um, a class of the police academy where they created a flipboard, um, which is mobile. Um, and so they had these uh, posters, which they had to uh, essentially carry or drive around. Is it a movie? Oh, it's a movie. It's a movie. It's not a poster. Um, and so they created um, basically a poster for demonstrations, but that can be changed, and which is basically a screen. So you can reuse it every single time and you don't have to reprint posters for every single demonstration. And sometimes maybe the copy shop is already closed, but using this um, display, that's a very sustainable way of going out and protesting. Well, I guess it uses electricity. But, well, let's hope that's um, solar energy. We thought that was very innovative. Very, very cool, more of that. And then, of course, that also happened, um, at, that was used at the protest, and I think they're justifiably very f proud of this. Is that a car protest? I think it's probably just the speaker in front, and then you have the display there. I really like it. It's, you save a lot of effort. You still need to walk, but at least you don't have to carry um, any heavy posters anymore. Um, <laughs> well, and you have to build a car next to carry the display. That's a hacker-compatible protest. Well, and the people in Munich um, have celebrated their 10-year um, anniversary um, by putting something into one of those like time capsules. They should get some kind of price for that 10 years. Um, 10 years of being in their new rooms. Um, they had some events there. And one thing that was very important for them is that they had a member, um, a member assembly where they also said that bas basically clearly said that um, hacker ethics are very incompatible with um, uh, with the far right they've slightly amended the wording we had uh, one of those declarations with the CCC a few years ago which specifically referenced the NPD but they changed it slightly to reference more um, current political developments such as AFD and I think some people are somehow surprised recently that the CCC positions itself on the left end of the spectrum. I'm really speechless. Where were you for the past 30 years? Um, when Vau Holland said in uh, 1989 that when he, when he wrote and, and called on people to get involved with the CCC, then you're definitely inheriting something that is a left-wing agenda and you really need to be fine with that our heart is very much on the left and that's where it beats and you have to be you have to be fine with that it's a loud round of applause yeah yeah i'll hurry up okay let's move to karlsruhe um the entropia also celebrates um they celebrate their 20-year anniversary um so it's existed for 20 years consistently and so for next year they have a true like a real party plan for 2019 so um, they're also moving into um, a new location they're going to have a party to inaugurate that pa place um there's going to be a massive birthday cake for the gpn there's going to be a large entropia party at camp um, there's going to be a stage with a bar, and then in December they're going to ring out the party year with the so-called Glühpn, so which is a reference to the German term for mold wine, um, and the programming night. Um, so it's definitely worth having a look at um, and visiting this local Urfa circle uh, Entropia. In Berlin, there are also changes happening. So there's Chaos Radio, which has existed since 1995 on regular radio waves, um, and which has been and w which has now published more than 250 episodes. Is unfortunately uh, it's unfortunately putting out its last episode on radio um, in June. The radio station which we have been working together with, which we have been working with, um, Fritz, oh, yeah, there were different but stations we worked with before, but, well, unfortunately, they changed their plan. They really wanted to tell us what the reasons were, um, and if you ask the right person, they will tell you, but basically, the Chaos Radio will not be on regular radio waves anymore, but I think, I think it's been three, four years there, or is 
there are alternatingly different chaos radios happening and being recorded at Ka the Chaos Computer Club Berlin itself. Um, that includes um, VOC, which is also ver working here at Congress. Um, they're working together with the Ber Berlin CCC members, um, which means that Chaos Radio has actually been published by CCC itself every other month, and we will continue that proudly to keep Chaos Radio alive even next year. Um, so, oh no, that's not the Chaos Computer Club Stuttgart. Um, that's the picture I was supposed to show. They have existed since 2004, um, and they, you know, they have had since 2004 um, a, a series of presentations, which has been happening in their city library in 2008, since 2008. Um, the, bo the building itself is worth a visit because it's really, really impressive. Um, and so a series, a series of talks by the CCC Stuttgart might be a good reason to visit. And consider because of the new police law that was supposed to be published in Baden-Württemberg, they also published their own press release. Um, and they also issued a comp constitutional complaint. They're definitely going to go to court against this police law. So um, uh, Baden-Württemberg actually already uh, changed their police law, but there are new changes planned. Um, and the CCC Stuttgart is planning to launch a constitutional complaint. We hope that they will be successful, but it might take a few years. I mean, no worries if it takes a long time. We've been around for a while. We can wait. Let's quickly continue here. Um, so in Chaospot, um, in Essen, in Western Germany, um, they have r around 90 members. I am so jealous because they basically started working with um, the Sendung mit der Maus, which is a famous child's TV program. Um, and so they've basically worked with them and said, well, we will also open our doors. Um, we have expertise working with children from Chaos Mix, Chaos Mix schools. Um, and so they had some really cool events at the time. Um, I'm supposed to say how many people there were. I think there were 30 children who came to the local CCC um, and who basically visited the t that TV show and visited the CCC there. Um, they will also be participating here with the Capture the Flag roundtable. Um, and they will be organizing the third Hack in Pot in February, which is a small type of Congress where if you don't, if you, if you maybe don't want to present something at a large Congress, a large event like the CCC itself, then something like this might be a good place to kind of um, try something out, um, hold a small talk, which you can hold there, which will probably be streamed by VOC, and then we'll, be, we'll end up um, in our digital library online and will be available there for all of eternity. Um, Privacy Week, I think, Linus, you attended. I was only there for part of it, but then I had to leave. Well, yeah, I was um, there for the Privacy Week in Vienna. I think they called it C3W. So the CCC Vienna has been organizing this for a few years now in, well, Vienna. Um, this event have happened in their ethnology museum, which sounds terrible, but which is a beautiful building. And there it was possible. So the CCC opens itself up, op opens itself up to the public. And I think it was in general a very professional, very event that you should support if possible. Um, and I think you're now seeing the first kind of spin-offs because there's now a first privacy week um, and you see the old, good old VOC traditions are um, kept alive even at events like this. Um, well, is that is that alive? Um, during privacy week there were 30 angels, so they've definitely adopted this, um, thir uh, this angel culture and these 30 angels um, put in thir more than 3,000 hours of work. Um, that also deserves another round of applause. Das sind 50 Stunden pro Engel. Vielleicht sollten wir die Engel um, So I think we also should maybe tell the um, Angel Union that um, the standards here at Congress are actually quite 
quite relaxed. So yeah, the CCC is basically their father. Um, <laughs> so in Recklinghausen, <laughs> they have a, they have raided a big display. They worked with another association, and they took apart part of an old power plant. And over the next years or decades, they're going to use these parts and basically rebuild them inside their hackerspace to basically build um, such a big status display for things like bandwidth um, and, well, the type of things you, you need. We're also really curious to see what happens there, but it could take a while. So Hamburg, they, for starters, they said a few bad things because they said that some of these um, Freifunk nodes, which provide free Wi-Fi, may need to be taken off, um, may to need to be taken down again. Um, but the good thing is that the people who used to live in these containers um, are now actually able to live in real apartments. So there's now new material and equipment that can maybe be used elsewhere and that can be used to support people who have less access to the internet than maybe us. There was also hack over. They're expanding their rooms. And for some reason, soldering is a really hot thing there. Um, Oh God! Please, you have to pay for the. You have to play some, pay something into the pun jar for that bad joke. Okay, so I noticed that if the people in Hamburg uh, are working on soldering and are doing so much soldering, and so let's back, back, back. No, we can only go forwards. So then, if the people in Recklinghausen have a big problem with this massive display then maybe the people from Hamburg can send a few people to Recklinghausen who can help them solder their display. Well, now you've got a new task. Another thing that I thought was really cool is that Hamburg has a, a Young Hacker Day once per month. Well, we, we're not talk, we're talking about that later? Are we talking about that? Well, there's also a Young Hacker Day here. No, I think we were want to talk about that during one of the later slides, but I can talk about this now before we forget, because we're kind of running out of time. Um, I don't know why people are stressing us out. We have so much time left. Everything's relaxed. Um, so this time we don't have a slide for Chaos Makes Schools, which is our school-based program, but we wanted to mention this nevertheless. At this point that a lot of um, Erfas, so local CCCs, have this Chaos Make Schools, uh, this school, the school program, um, which definitely was hyped and supported quite a bit after there was a talk about it here a few years ago, where pe a lot of people said they want to do that as well. This project is about basically going into schools and talking to teachers, talking to students to essentially discuss digitalization, digitalization in schools, in education, and maybe give students the basic tools that they need to live in the digital world that we live in and want to live in. Um, and for example, at the Young Hackers Day, they explain how to solder, um, how to solder th certain things and also how to program things, but also you talk to them, might also talk to them about uh, data protection and what it means if we um, live and move in digital worlds. And it's really nice to see that the Young Hackers Day also happens here at Congress and it sold um, more than, and we, we, well, we sold more than 300 tickets or gave more than 300 tickets to uh, students. And we enable th so we enable 300 students to participate in this hacker community here, and it's incredibly important that we reach and contact younger generations because it might be specifically those younger generations who at 42 C3 um, who are organizing this congress with us and for us, and who who are also part of our future. And I am again and again super excited. Uh, when I hear what this project, Chaos Makes School, um, what it does and how many people are involved there. And I think that also deserves another round of applause for everyone who's involved there.
dann Next. Uh, müssen wir ein bisschen was überspringen. Now we need to skip a few things. Um, in Dresden there was there is da data traces are happening again. You all heartily invited. It always happens in fall. The next privacy week starts on October 27th and 2019. For everyone who's interested in kind of getting an idea of how Air Force local CCCs work, how you can support them, how they can maybe help you implement certain projects that you had in mind, there is a, an event today between uh, 4 and 6 p.m. Oh, so it's today, not day three, like it says on the slide. It's in workshop room M3, so in around an hour. Um, so it's in workshop room M3. So if you're interested in local CCCs, then you're welcome to, co to go there and kind of get to know your local club. And if you're interested in that, you should just go there, drop by. I'm not supposed to say that there's free beer because there are only 33, 330 seats. So I was paid not to mention that there's a free a beer. Oh, well, of course, we don't only have good news this year. We also um, had quite a heavy setback this year because we had to close 80, um, <laughs> we had to close 80 franchises across Germany, CCC. Um, that was really, really very difficult. That was not something we could do with uh, all the angels. So this is a reference to a shoe chain that is also called CCC that went le basically left Germany this year. Um, we're also very sorry for the people who send us complaint emails this year to the Chaos Computer Club about any problems that they had with uh, their shoe purchases. We will not be taking care of these emails any further, I'm, I'm afraid. So there's just one more a very last block of topics and the aims that we won't be able to talk about this in detail, I'm afraid. But it's very important because 2018, I think, was a year where we talked about content filtering a lot, partially because of um, the network, uh, network content regulation law, which was happening at the beginning of the year, which was discussed in the beginning of the year. Um, where uh, there was a lot of discussion to what extent um, companies had to be transparent about the things that they filtered. I think looking back, we have to say that uh, numbers published by the government and numbers published by the um, by these companies, the number the number of deleted content or the amount of deleted content is primarily due to violating. Um, due to violating rules and standards by those companies rather than and so in many cases these things are deleted in reference to community standards rather than German law but that's also partially because it's quite difficult actually to find the forms that you'd have to use to get something deleted based on this German law that was implemented recently um, but I also think partially this debate kind of like died down because there isn't that much going on. But there's still a constitutional complaint. I, I do think this is, I mean, this is about freedom of speech, so it's a very important basic right. Um, relatedly, there was a much bigger debate um, triggered by things that were happening on the um, European level because there were these uh, terror filters, which are basically anti-terror filters, where there were 10,000 pictures and 8,000 video data that they, they, they were just filtered um, through upload filters because you're not even allowed to upload them at all. Um, so basically there's this content control when you're trying to upload these things. Um, and so, yeah, so that's also related to all these questions of copyright and uh, we think that is a problem, um, not just me. We, um, and that's also not just a German problem, but a European mes European problem. And we have a big quick message about that that also says something not about this because we want to emphasize that we as an organization are not by alone, but we have people who are fighting with us. Well, we see that we're fighting on several fronts where people are trying to introduce this in an infrastructure for censorship, where people are trying to prevent certain contents from up being uploaded in the first place. and they're taking on the power to 
decide what gets to be, get uploaded in the first place, and that's completely opaque and transparent. And a second aspect of this is that, so next year, something that's going to happen next year is that the EU copyright directive is going to come. Um, so on the European level and the national level, we don't, we're not by ourselves. Uh, we invited Kurt Absal. Um, Kurt, could you come to the stage? Who works with Cory Doctorow and who Kurt Absal, who works with Cory Doctorow and with us, and who's briefly going to talk about it to us? Can you take the podium? Hi, Kurt. Thank you. Thanks everyone for giving me a, a, a moment to talk about uh, Article 13. Uh, you've probably heard that the EU's uh, close to passing a copyright directive with it, a rule in it called Article 13, which might be the well, this most is all in English. rule that has ever come so. out of I guess I don't have to process. translate this. Under Article 13, online platforms will have to censor any copyrighted work that the users post. And the process of determining, the process of determining what the copyright filter is, anyone, can add, anyone can add something to it, and the filter will be used to compare that, compare every used contribution code text audio videos to the database, and if the algorithm thinks there's a match, then you're blocked. These filters, These filters also will also hundreds cost hundreds of millions of euros, euros to produce meaning within the reach of, only the reach of even the largest internet companies, mostly the US tech giants, and, and the smaller European competitors will be hard pressed to be able to comply with this directive crushed under the weight of this rule. Article 13 is bad, Article 13 for, is bad for competition, it's bad for freedom of expression, it's bad for, expression, it's bad for the EU. It's bad for artists, it's bad for every internet user. The next and possible final EU meeting on this is coming up in mid-January and the German government holds the balance of power. So we're asking you to contact your ministers and tell them to hold the line. Tell them to continue the opposition to Article 13. This will just affect Germany, it won't stop at Europe. Every internet user in the world will be affected by this, and we don't want to have the EU become the largest exporter of bad internet policies. The German government is currently unsure, and I think it's, we should try to convince them. And I'm worried how all this will affect German tech companies, and they are right to make the federal uh, Ministry for Economic Affairs and Germany will decide the minister is Peter Altmaier. So I'm asking you to call him because we have a petition with 4 million signature and people are saying that the proponents of Article 13 are saying we can ignore it because it's bots. Well, you're not bots and if you call them a person, you can convince them you are not a bot as well. So you can make a difference and call. We have up here this URL, it's a short URL that will direct you to a page on the CCC wiki that will explain how to contact the minister. Give it a phone call. Phone calls are much more effective than other means of communication. The more effort we put into the communication, the more is received by the political office as the will of the people. So we are asking you to make the call, ask your friends to make the call, and together we can stop this bad internet rule. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, didn't get the first small part because I wasn't realizing that you uh, can't really hear the, the normal um, track. We want to close this uh, look back with a call for action. Uh, so you have to call until mid of Januar, January by Altmaier. We have some more, which is important for 2019. We want to, to, you to be engaged. The club was always, well, the union of people being active together and not just informing themselves, but also really in their AFR circles and with public work and writing, clicking, calling, like work with this. We want to, you to do this. If any, not one else is saying something, well, thank you for your attention. Hope you have another nice two days of Congress. 
Don't forget the call to action. Thank you.